All right. Three, two, one. What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Michael Moeller here with the Michael Moore Mentality. And I'm sitting down with Dr. Thomas O'Connor, a.k.a. The Anabolic Doc. If you've searched testosterone on YouTube, this guy, say hi, say hi Doc. Give him the flex. Do it again. That's it. That's it. The Anabolic Doc. There he is. So Almost you, 55. Walking walk the talk. Walking the talk. And that's why I love – there's a lot of things I like about this guy. But if you go on YouTube, I would subscribe to this guy. Check out his channel. He's producing a lot of great information on testosterone and androgenics in general. Uh, Doc, first off, I just want to thank you. It's an honor to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Yeah. So, but first off, I want to just kind of get a little bit more about you. Tell us about your background and how you became the anabolic doc. God, you know, somebody, it depends what rendition I want to go with. <laughs> the real rendition is, you know, I guess I always was kind of born to be the anabolic doc. So when I was a young guy, I'm 55 this year, you know, I've been lifting weights kind of coming out of the womb. Mm-hmm. I'm in New York, you know, I'm a, I'm a half Irish Jewish guy from New York City. So it's a pretty crazy life back in the 70s and the 80s for guys like us out, just outside New York City with the Goombas <laughs> and just a crazy life. I lived, you know, I'm, I suffered, I've always suffered from a great life, you know, culturally. Mm-hmm. And I just, being a skinny, I have the body dysmorphia. Oh, I have it. I always suffer. It's kind of a thing you'll never, you'll never get away from. And I, it's just a really identity that so many men have. And we'll get into that later with the psychiatric stuff. So I'm, I'm, there I am, 13 years old, and I was able to bench like when I was like 15, 315. Wow. Just, just, I don't know, just, just genetics from the, from the tricep. I there didn't you know. Horseshoe there. I, mean, I don't even know. I mountain bike. I don't even really lift anymore, just for fun. Tore the peck off last year. I said, I better give this, better this, you know, woo. I did the 505 and 198. Woo. So, yeah, 505, 505 pound bench at 198 pounds, legitimate. In the beginning of my trail, where my video, you'll see that. That that's was a, you. That's what I've always thought. I don't know if you, you've said that before. I'm like, dang. That's so you're walking walk the walk over here, ladies and gentlemen. Right, look, I mean, this is what. It, so basically, I'm 13. I'm lifting weights. I'm hanging out, having a great life, and really didn't care about anything more. I wrestled, and I just the rest of my life until probably my mid late 20s was everything was about lifting weights. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would go, of course, I have so much, so much, so many goddamn garbage. I have so much garbage. I have so many plaques on the wall. I have a graduate degree, PhD, master's degree. And I have so many degrees. Fill us in on a little bit. What are, what are, what are some of your degrees? And, and well, you're an so MD I, too. Right? So when I, when I was in my 20s, you know, I have a, I have a degree in, uh, in landscape architecture from Syracuse University. You could see I'm ADD. Land, landscaping these bad boys. Yeah, yep. I, I was just, I just, I didn't care if I had a C. I just wanted to just keep lifting and keep, you know, partying and, you know, for the lifting crowd. I lifted upstate New York back in the 80s with John Cook. Oh, my God. Ted Arcidi, Ted Arcidi, first man to bench 700. I trained and lived with these guys. Uh, so back in the day, I was just writing, on, I just finished an article about what it was like back in the day before we had gurus and tons of steroids. Mm-hmm. We had a little bit of steroids, and I'm not saying it's any better than what it is. You know, it's worse now because of the sheer uh, the numbers and the, the huge, the, the, the amount. Mm-hmm. And, and starting so young, but I never give it a blessing. So I'm back there, Mike, you know, and I'm back. And um, I'm, I'm, I just want, I dropped out of the architecture world and I went post back pre-med. Oh, first I got an exercise physiology graduate degree in exercise physiology. And then I worked, I ran some gyms and I worked in outpatient cardiac rehabs. Oh, cool. So that was the why you know, yeah, so much about the heart. He's really good guys too about the heart. That's going to be something, a big thing that we want to talk about is anabolic testosterone in the heart, but this guy knows so, what you're talking so, about. So yeah, so I, I was into fitness. I was, in, I was beyond fitness, right? Cause I just, I was 220 for a while, 230 and I'm only 5'9". So I, I want to just be jacked. I got bitten by the bug of power. Bitten when you get muscle bug. tissue, man, you get high. It's mm-hmm. just with or without drugs. So, so, and I wasn't, you know, I was a regular guy and I was at Syracuse University and then I came back, kicked around. I ran a few health clubs. I worked outpatient cardiac rehab. I worked inpatient in, in the hospitals. People were calling me doctor and I was like, stop it. Don't call me doctor. Don't call me doctor. I'm not a doctor. No, you should be a doctor. So when I was 30 years old, wow, I went back pre-med. I can't imagine. Not even, we're not even ready. You're not even done yet. Yeah. At 30, I went back to Syracuse University for one year to do a post back pre-med and done. Within one year, I was in med school. I'm very humble and proud. 
for our Mexican people. I don't want to put a wall up on this piece, people, but I understand the politics. But that that's University of Auto Autonomous de Guadalajara. And then oh, I cool. transferred back. I went to Guadalajara mm-hmm. and it was a huge med school, which was made the I teach in the med schools here now. It's a joke compared to what they put us through down there. Really? Oh yeah. It's it's old school. It's like 18, 1900s in mm-hmm. some respect to that mentality. If they don't like the way you look, they take a test, they tear it out of your hands. Uh, oh, falta, regresa su casa. Uh, and it's just like, so you had to be a monster. And then you had to get ready for American boards. So I transferred back to New York Med. I'm almost disappointed that I did. You know? <laughs> so I came back to New York Med and I just wanted to be an internist. I want to be a cardiologist. I wanted to be a cardiologist. So look, within two or three years, obviously I finish up up here at New York Medical College. I get into a residency up in the Northeast, which is uh, interviewed in, the, in Boston, in New York. And I ended up, because of my daughter kind of following her around, she was only four, unfortunately going through a divorce. Mm. I, end up, um, I end up at University of Connecticut School of Medicine that I am here today. I'm still a teaching a mentor in the medical school. And I went into an aggressive f- residency training program for internal medicine, categorical mm. guys, it's not family practice. It's make, they, they make you a specialist, and I was going to be a cardiologist. After the first month in the ICU coronary care unit, we didn't have time. We didn't have any. There were no caps working. I'm not kidding. 36-hour shifts every three. And any old-school doc will tell you it's no freaking wow, joke. So after one month in there, I, did, I had depression. I had depression in and out of school. You weren't sleeping. Your testosterone was probably low. Definitely low. And I was starting to get on and off it during that period, as you can imagine. Mm-hmm. And that's the truth. And um, so I, so the midway through residency training at University of Connecticut School of Medicine, Hartford, Connecticut, I was out of New York now, <laughs> is I said, I just want to be a general practitioner. And I just want, I want to protect people. I want to get, I want to wreck cardiologist business. Oh, yeah. I, I love it. I want to be an expert in hypertension, diabetes, and cholesterol. Now I'm, I'm an endothelist. Endothelius. Check that out, ladies and gentlemen. That's your blood vessels. I'm an endothelius. It's an old word. It's been around. I'm an endotheliast. So, but I'm an endotheliast only for men that are on testosterone because mm-hmm. testosterone will hit it and mm-hmm. it's not necessarily good or bad. You got to be careful. So I went through that period. During that time period, I was always lifting. Four, I, let's see, my best lifts, 505 at one night in competition. I oh. did five for all my goombas and all my guys out there for the trash talk. Everyone knows it with a bench press shirt on in the gym. I've yeah. done like 535 and 550. Mm-hmm. I was like 220 though. I'm, not, I'm pretty down, down to like 190 right now, trying to be healthy, really healthy. And my whole focus is my heart right now. So, you know, in the end, I went through that period. I deadlifted 575. I never did it in a full meet. I don't want anyone to think I'm a powerlifter and I respect. I take care of some of the strongest men in the world. Mm-hmm. And I am amazed and humbled by what these men put together. Yeah, Forget now. the gloves. You can yeah. give me, you can give me and you as many drugs as trend as you want. I'm not going to go to a full meet at any weight class and do what some of these men do. There, it's, it's getting pretty, pretty ridiculous. It's genetic. Yes, they do drugs and they're hurting themselves, which is I try to reverse that suffering. Mm-hmm. But they're genetic. They're monsters. Their brain has to go there, and they do have to put the pain up, and they do respond to steroids, and they get hurt. Yeah. So. I did it through that period, and then in, I came out of residency training. I opened up a private practice in 2005, and as I did it, you know, little old ladies came, which I loved, and, and all these men started to come, Doc. Mm. Men on steroids came to me because okay. I was at night. By, by day, I was a doctor, but by <laughs> night, by night, I was 405 for 22 reps, bleeding from yeah. the knee. I was a psycho and they were like, you're a doctor, you're a doctor. I'm like, coming to you. Yeah. And they were, I was like, no, no, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> and then they came to me and then in 2009, I came back home one night and I said, I, so many guys are coming in. I said, let me, what can I do? I, I'm, I want to do something with anabolics. I don't really know about this stuff. I'm, I'm a little nervous, but mm-hmm. they're so messed up. I got, I'm yeah. not an anabologist. I, but I'm an expert in blood pressure. I got the cardiac background. I have a PA, part of a PhD and a graduate degree in, in endothelial science and physiology of cardiovascular disease. So I'm putting it all together. I'm seeing the guys having heart attacks and suffering, not to mention the depression and the sexual issues. So I go, wait a minute. So I'm on, I'm on GoDaddy. And for $12, I bought <laughs> anabolicdoc.com. Love it. Love it. And that was 2009. I had a glass of wine and went to bed. And literally, I, I was on the front cover 
within about a month on Powerlifting USA. Mm -hmm. And then I made within about two months from that, I got a call from Blackman, Steve Blackman, and I've been writing for Muscular Development ever mm -hmm. since. And I have, I've converted my whole general practitioner practice, except for a few sweethearts. <laughs> I still take care of a few sweethearts because oh. I don't want to get the cane in the head when I'm walking around. So <laughs> I, I hope they watch this. <laughs> I swear, and I do love them when they come in. That's so great. the truth is, Doc, I am the first and only internal medicine physician, mm -hmm. at least in America, if not the world, that's Dr. T over in, in Greece, mm -hmm. that has made a 24-7 or a full day job only exclusively out of taking care of men that are on androgens mm -hmm. from abusive androgen, which is called steroids, through to 60-something-year-old men that are accountants on testosterone. That's all yeah. I do. Well, can testosterone. you talk a little bit about that? I think there's a big stigma around regular testosterone replacement therapy versus you can even jump into the specifics of Trend and Anivar and kind of, you know, like guys don't even know the difference. Like when they well, think, let me, oh. Let me, let, me, let me just tell you what it is. Yeah. So actually, because I've done so many videos on this and I, and I please, so go to YouTube, everyone, and just put in anabolic doc. You know, you can go to my website, but you, you can just get there. From, so, and we're, I'm so humbled to have found this love and passion in my life mm -hmm. that integrates in with my vocation and my training and my expertise. So, steroids, you're a man. We're, we're, we have testosterone, it comes out of your testicles, and it's, uh, it's called an androgen. There are many other androgens, as you see my history of steroids. There are 60, if not 600. So, you're, you're a man, you're, you come into the world on, on androgen, it affects your brain even in the womb. Boys come out and they have certain behaviors when they're younger as babies into infants, and then testosterone kicks in in puberty, and they, you differentiate from men and women. So, and I would never go into the fact that, you know, for homosexuality, people are people, I'm very liberal and social liberal, mm -hmm. but I mean, people get hung up on some of these things. There are inherently biologically androgenic, there's men and there's women, and obviously, there's a lot of in between. People have personalities and sexual mm -hmm. preferences. This has nothing to do with that. This is you have androgen on your brain and your skeletal muscle, and don't forget the cardiac, Heart. cardiac yeah. muscle. So, testosterone. It for the, the essential explanation, if you will, that that, that to to the the layperson, testosterone is, is there, he's on a steroid. My husband come on, is on a steroid. Mm -hmm. It's essentially biologic androgens are going to be dose small doses regular doses dose dependent versus anabolic steroids are just a, a lot more and they're different types and that's it mike right mm -hmm. right Doc? yeah, that's, yeah I, I totally agree and there's nothing uh, more to say. They, and yeah and they work di like they're stronger they work differently when people are like that's oh well, right. yeah and yeah, depending I, on the genetics what i'm so amazed at what i discovered is I, this is andrology mm -hmm. on steroids. It's, it's, a, it's a European term. I don't want to use it. Because andrologists are these fertility guys. But andrology, I was going to be the androgenic doc, but I'm the anabolic. I mean, it, it's, it's men have genetics. And as far as that one Y chromosome that differentiates, it's incredible. Well, can you, can you talk about the benefits of what, like you, you, you kind of hit on, it's good on your brain, it's good on your muscle. Like, why do we need testosterone? Is it good for the heart? Is it bad for the heart? Here's the deal. There's, so I can talk, you, 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 you got to keep you focused because this. All you, right. Well, let's, do, let's do that. Testosterone, is it good or bad for the heart? Because I have guys come in and they're like, I'm not feeling good. They have symptoms of low T, low libido, no energy, you know, late, late 50s. Okay. Let me, they, let me they say, to, they let say me hey, to, I'm afraid to take testosterone because I heard it's bad for my heart. Let, let, let me be, um, let me, I, I pride myself, only evidence-based medical support. What I, everything I do has to be medically, but okay. A man, so testosterone, is it worse for the heart? We don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a question that depending on what perspective are you, a 17-year-old man? A 20 year old man, a 40 year old man? Well, men are, have androgens, so that's, that makes them men and they have early heart disease. Men do have early heart disease. It's multifactorial. I love that part about what you say. It's like it's not one thing. It's like you talk about blood pressure, diet, yeah. People, this is, what, this is why it's such a cerebral and a real scientific endeavor. What I do, this is like, you just don't make these generalizations. So the, the data, unfortunately, let's go into what I know you wanna hear and people wanna hear. 
testosterone replacement. For years and years and years, there's, sta there's data currently that shows its positive effect that if you're hypogonadal, mm -hmm. you're gonna, you're, the, the end, your end of, you have a, a shorter lifespan. Mm -hmm. if, if you're hypogonadal and you have existing coronary disease or CHF, you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. Now, I can go into that because I'm a freak and, and I, can, I can tell you all the studies. I, mm -hmm. I, my friends are doctors over, over at Harvard and the guys at Baylor. Look. The truth is you have to look at everything from a point where there's standard evidence-based guidelines where it's N equals a thousand versus N equals one. Yeah. So you look at a man, if he's, he's middle-aged men, I learned all this from these great doctors. This is just a cauldron of what I've learned from my colleagues and I take from the pieces like people should They work for me and for my patients specifically. Every man's got a fingerprint, I'll tell you. So you can't just crush, crush stuff down someone's throat. Some men, testosterone replacement, absolutely is dangerous for them. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why. Because of the receptors that are in the, the endothelial tissue, in the myocardial tissue, in their liver for their myocytes, in the way it relates to their lipid, deep, their profile. So when you give testosterone to, to men, let's just say most men, their HDL is not going to go up. Mm -hmm. unless they inherently lose and weight. That's, or, that's the good cholesterol, and, right? No, yeah, and that's, so that's bad. Now, so look at it. Do, 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 let's do a list. Testosterone replacement, not even giving super physiologic, not, and not gel versus pellets versus, versus injection. This is all I do, right? So just giving testosterone to a man, and you look in the future what's going to happen to him, his labs, his vital signs. HDL will go down. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. That's dangerous. Let's keep moving. Let's keep, it's dangerous. Okay. Yeah. It's, that's an independent risk framing. That's an independent, I said, Framingham risk factor. It's part of Framingham. This is evident. This, this show is for real doctors. Mm -hmm. Everything I do has to be vetted in my brain before I comes from the ear to the mouth, which sometimes it slips, is for real physicians. And that's why they call me because I'm in your face, but everything I'm doing has to be number one, evidence-based. Evidence -based. And then after the evidence-based, I do anecdotal medicine and I do medicine from, see the stomach, see the stomach? Well, I'll show you the abs in a minute because then the next thing is I do it from my gut and it's don't hurt someone. If you give testosterone to a man, I could predict, I've been doing this for 20 years essentially for men clinically. So as a physician with a license since 2001, okay, if you give a man testosterone, you're going to, and, and you predict what's going to happen. Top 10 things, HDL is going to go down. Depending on the man and his diet and his genes and what he's doing, his LDL could go down. That's good. Blood pressure. Now, blood pressure. So three things kill people. Three things kill people. Hypertension, diabetes, cholesterol. And the cholesterol is an abnormality. It's called dyslipidemia, which is too much of the bad, too little of the good. Forget triglycerides and APO lipoprotein B, LP little a. I'm an expert, obviously. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a lover of lipidology. Mm -hmm. So forget that just inherently the general panel. So you take testosterone, what happens? Hypertension. Now, the, with me, none of these guys get hypertension. I'm, this is what they pay for. Now, mm -hmm. these are, in the end, my men, if they come off steroids, I obviously have to use fertility medicines, the SARMs, the, 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 excuse me, the SERMs, the anti-estrogens carefully, and HCG, and then I transition to, to testosterone. We could talk about that. Yeah. But what do, I, what do I watch, and why am I different from the anti-aging guys? which I do put them down because anti, you don't want to anti-age, don't have a heart attack. Yeah. Testosterone has nothing to do with anti-aging. Mm. It's quality of life because you're horny and you yeah. feel great. Yeah. But, but is it worth it for, you can have a heart attack. The data in 2013 and 15 came out, the Fed said in 2015, I believe it was, they said testosterone replacement, is a, we have to put a warning on it. Mm -hmm. I saw because that. Heart attack, stroke, and death. Mm -hmm. Really? That's been, that's been now, that, that's been proven that, that they made a big mistake because the data was flawed. Mm -hmm. Now, it, can it be, it was the VA study. So you got a bunch of great veterans back from probably Korean War guys, Vietnam guys at that time. If you look at the age epidemic, the, 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 the epidemiological age bracket, and these guys are hypertensive, they're diabetic, they already have heart disease. And then they actually did coron They actually did look. They looked at the coronary arteries because they did CT angiography, and they gave these guys testosterone. Most of them actually went down because it was gel. Because gel's garbage mainly. Yeah. And then they actually had more increase and uptick 
in, in, in heart attack, stroke, and death. Yeah. Uh, Boom. Yeah. The, the but that's horrible. Yeah. And that's such a, uh, a bad example though. You know, like with testosterone, you have guys walking in. One of my big arguments is uh, guys walking in and their testosterone's under 200 and they're not going to the gym. They're not eating right. They just don't want to do anything. So a lot of times what I've seen with the testosterone, it's been able to give them energy to do the things that can live a healthy lifestyle. You know what Arnold said back in the day, that this is a toy. The body's a toy. These are yeah. toys in the gym. And so, and other expert doctors and people I know have said, it's really interesting with steroids. It's the drug that kind of, it makes you go to the gym. Yeah. You know, so, but, it, but it's all about balance and obviously and keeping mm -hmm. it right. But so when you give testosterone, your, your, your blood pressure will most likely get affected. Mm -hmm. But most, if it's balanced and you're not full of water and mm -hmm. hypertensive and your kidneys are okay, you see, how, and you don't have heart disease already, or you do, or your, your left ventricle is enlarged. So if you, if you have an expert physician that knows how to manage all those other things, you know, I tell guys, there's, there, there's cosmetic issues with testosterone replacement, then there's mm -hmm. dangerous stuff. The only danger, there's only two dangers, only two, heart and prostate. And, uh, and the prostate, there's no can, data. To yeah. Can and, you jump into the prostate? Because I'm kind of, what I've seen in the research is, re again, really back and forth. I, th I thought I saw a study that showed yeah. that men who had higher testosterone, naturally, not, not induced, had less chance for prostate cancer. And I saw a study yeah. where yeah. they had prostate cancer. They did, you know, they did prostatectomy or radi radiation. And then they gave guys testosterone and there was no increase for reoccurrence. But I don't know. I don't know if you've been Here's seeing. Here's the deal. Let me just, I would just tell you some, the way I'd speak to a new patient. Yeah. I love, yeah. That's what I, I want to hear. I love this. I give the evidence base. So let me just conclude from we were before. So the difference between testosterone and steroids is essentially dose and the other, and the types of testosterone derivatives. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to do trend, although guys would like to for <laughs> But I got some problems. I got a problem because I got I got guys doing trend, and mm -hmm. then I I have, I have to reset their sexual desire. We'll talk about that's insane. Yeah, I got a new my trend video is blowing up because I'm like I'm begging men, that, Doc, what do I do, Doc? I'm I, I want to do a video next called Chasing Trend. Ooh, what do yeah. I do? I can't get my sex drive back after I've done trend because you set the bar so high. Okay, so number one, testosterone versus steroids, dose dependent. And different types of agents because mm -hmm. you could take you take a little bit of testosterone trt and then you take this much see my hand going up to the ceiling yeah that's <laughs> so it's a dose dependent dose dependent variable and the next thing is testosterone is it dangerous is it not you have to go like this i have to go i don't know because, you work with a good doctor and get blood work done and make sure they know what they're doing yeah, absolutely right? that, that this is why I'm, i love what i'm doing and i'm franchising we're going to be we got some franchise plans with doctors that i have to train them in my wing all around the country and so because i'm overloaded which is i'm so humble for that and we have a bet we have the great best team in the world because i'm really a concierge doc i do this via concierge medicine mm -hmm. i was a concierge doc retainer doc and just just upper VIP where I only see like a very limited number, and these they they, they don't pay. It's seventeen hundred bucks a year for me. It's not a lot of money. It's that's 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 a steal. I think that's that's a deal. I, it's it's cheap, you know. So, it, but it still does cost money, and people always squawk, squawk and get mad at me for that. But it's okay. so so testosterone affects straight up. I tell guys, I go from I go like this. I say, sir. Okay, before we put, use my, my, my time goes, you know, my, 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 I do two hours for my h and and it's insane. I have their labs. Okay, sir, now we looked at everything. Maybe we're going to give you a trial of testosterone. We're going to transition you off. I'm going to treat you head to toe. Number one, hair loss. Mm -hmm. Hair loss. You're going to lose your hair potentially. Next two, puffiness. It can cause puffiness. Number three, acne, acne. It can cause skin acne. Number four, moving down. Into the, it's not going to affect the throat, the teeth. It's not going to affect the thyroid. Moving down, it affects the nipples. Gynecomastia, mm -hmm. bitch tit. Yeah, yeah. I'm. This is all I do now. <laughs> go from the. This is. But it, you know what though? There's no data, which I thought ten years ago we would see it. No data for breast cancer. You know oh. why? You know why? It causes super physiologic estrogen levels. Yeah. If men, women yeah. super physiologic estrogen levels, they're at risk for breast cancer. Why not men? Tell me the reason why. Uh, receptors? Receptor, it's a par it becomes a partial antagonist. Did you know that steroids were used back in the day, all of them, DACA, most of them, for metastatic breast cancer? Wow. Oh, no it, way. It, I mean, it, yeah, it makes sense. The testosterone, the antagonizing the receptors. Yes, it's, it's a competitive antagonist anyway. I'm not, a, I'm not a, 
I'm an internist, but I'm not an oncologist, but no one's going to argue that. So for years and years and years, when I see gynecomastia, I'm very humble. I'm conservative. I will check it. I will have to say, sir, we don't know what that is. I have to send you to a breast surgeon and they get a mammo. Mm -hmm. These are men. They they, 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 they can get breast cancer, right? 1% of breast cancer in America are men. 1%. Yeah. So, so nine, so I've never seen one. Now I've seen 4,000 patients in my data bank. Never have oh. I seen one man on testosterone have breast cancer. So right. it, 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 it seems it, I, I can only say anecdotal, but there's no data from the data banks that we're going to talk about in a minute, the conservative evidence-based data banks. Mm-hmm. They, they, they talk about gynecomastia, but they don't talk about breast cancer. Mm-hmm. But I would think when I check estrogen levels, they're super physiologic. We use aromatase inhibitors, we use Clomid, and we use all these different drugs, Novavax, and we're doing it, and they're really high, and I'm balancing it with microdosing and all this kind of stuff. I, I do it every day. I, I do it 24-7 for my men, and I think, Jesus Christ, we're going to see breast cancer sooner or later. Not one case. Wow, interesting. So, come, at, so come in from the tits, come in from the nipples, come in, mm-hmm. come in from the heart. heart. Boom. Yeah. No, now, that's where I spend all my – the guys pay me – I put all my resources into your heart. I say, look, buddy, the hair, and we, we could talk to a blue in the face about all this, the bullshit studies where you give the, the, the DHT blockers, the mm-hmm. finasteride and finasteride. If you take finasteride and you're not on androgen, you're going to have finasteride syndrome. Have yeah. you ever heard of that? Yeah, I've had friends that come to me and they're balding and they go, hey, doc, just throw me on finasteride. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like I literally, no. I, in the last like, couple of weeks, finasteride my friend- Finasteride syndrome. Nope. Yeah. You're going to have, it's, it's similar to what, what I, and you know, I'm one of the discoverers of anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. Mm. I own that. Wow. I discovered it 20 years no ago. Way. That's my, that's my literature. It's been, it's a lot of guys, the academic guys over in Bashane at Harvard and the guys in Baylor are on that. I discovered it though. That's and cool. I, I can prove it because I was the guy writing the articles almost 20 years ago on it. Wow. That's why I first was in Connecticut. I was like, I, these guys are coming in. Doc, I can't get, I'm getting off. I'm yeah. getting off and I'm like, doc, I, 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 that's what PCT came into play. Does mm-hmm. it work? Does it not work? That's a whole nother story. We need to do some studies on this, but I'm the guy. Cause I was like, these men are like suicidal. Yep. But, but the endocrinology guy down the road that I do love, who's a diabetic expert, mm-hmm. not me. He's a diabetic. He's not a testosterone expert. Yeah. He's, this is too serious. This is too common. This is a specialty. I discovered this. He, he says, no, your testosterone will come back. And I was like, oh, sh- oh okay. I guess they're going to come back. Yeah, you're dusted. You're oh, you're dusted. You're done. Men, I've seen men after two or three years of if they can even make it without killing themselves yeah. or being so depressed they don't they just can't get out of their cabin. I've seen testosterone's chronically as low as ten and less than ten. And uh, so, so now we know. Ex- all right, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself. Can you talk about the HPA axis and and why the testes shrink and why we stop so producing? So, so, but so when you come down, the heart's Hard. huge. The heart is a huge thing. Men have men have heart disease before women naturally. Mm-hmm. So if you put it on steroids, doc, mm-hmm. and you wreck the HDL and you increase the LDL and they get hypertensive, you know the only thing it's going to be good for across the board, unless he doesn't overeat, is the diabetes and the pre-diabetes state. Which I could these could all be videos I could talk for yeah. ten hours. I have videos. So these re, so building muscle and burning abdominal and charging up your adipocytes in your abdomen, the, the abdomen, the core kills people. So mm-hmm. you understand how complicated this is. So no one really is taking steroids or testosterone and getting diabetic, but they can take it and get hypertensive and they can destroy mm-hmm. an already very poor lipid panel. And any man that has a family history of, of early coronary disease, I put all my, re- I, 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 manage this man like a monster mm. because he's going to have a heart attack anyway. Mm. Now you just put the guy maybe on steroids, even a TRT. See that? So mm-hmm. some TRT levels, heck, I have guys that are there. Every man's different. And, and the differences are across the board are just phenomenal. So you have to be so conservative and careful. And I micromanage blood pressure, cholesterol, sugar, testosterone, prostate. Let's keep moving down. We're on the heart. Let's move down under the heart. Apart from oral steroids, st- testosterone doesn't do anything to the GI tract. Mm-hmm. Nothing. It's not liver toxic, and it's not renal toxic. Mm-hmm. We're there were there were some uh, testosterone methyl- methylated was the one that was bad on the liver, but that's oral steroids. Yeah. Oral yeah. steroids. Yeah. Or, well, this is I said, Doc. Apart from oral mm-hmm. anabolic steroids, 
And there actually is a formulation of testosterone undecanate that goes through the lymphatic. It's not in America. It's not in America. And I just don't, Andriol, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. I just don't know about it because it goes through. I just don't, I mean, there are some increased clots when you do that, when you, there's some increase in PEs and deep, and there's some very tricky things with DVTs, which I could talk about later. So that we don't know, the data is just squirrely on it. So the heart, you got to put your money in the heart. You're a doctor. You're giving anyone testosterone, antigens. You, mm-hmm. you, you have to put the money where the danger is. On so, the heart. And everyone's talking about all the cosmetic stuff. It's not that I don't care. Well, about and and poly, polythysemia too, right? So, so, so let's, talk, let's digress real quick. So yeah. I, I always go lottery because oh, let, okay. let, let, me, let, let me go down. Let me keep going down. We'll go, those are side things that are part of the cardiovascular system for sure. You know, hematologic. So coming down the stomach, the guts, nothing. It, some guys even tell me, Doc, I have, a nervous, I have a nervous better. bowel, I have irritable bowel, and testosterone's been fun. Well, because your, your brain and your, and your, mm-hmm. it's, your gut, serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine. Yeah. Come on, we could do all this. We could, so it, you tie the, the gut in, and then now keep going. On, now, now you're, in, you're down below the belt. Mm-hmm. You got a prostate, you got testicles, you got a penis. Mm-hmm. Now, those I could talk about for 10, this is why you're doing it. Yep. So the testicles on almost every man, regardless of using a chronic HCG, and I'm going to argue people because I no one has more experience than me. It doesn't mean that you can take HCG and testosterone. Go, God bless you. And some men say, Doc, I do do it. I use that concurrent dose concomitantly, mm-hmm. and I've been doing it for 10 years or five years, and my testicles are fine. Sir, uh, great. Mm-hmm. I'm not arguing you. Most <laughs> men, most men, and I give it to guys. Most men, they're, it's 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 going to downregulate, and their testicles will get some water. Their ejaculate loads are going to get some. This is what I only use it to rescue men, young men. I rescue uh, PC. It's rescues anabolic recovery. Mm-hmm. I have my protocols, and I use it for fertility. The men that are like, hey, look, I got to have a kid, another kid, doc. I got to go. <laughs> so I just I I have a special protocol for fertility, and I use HCG with other things. Mm-hmm. So so we're in the ball prostate. Here's the data. I had to do. I had Let's to give it to me. Before. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> there's no data. There's so much data back in the days, early days in the 30s, where that initial study came from. That um, it was a doc in Harvard and Mass General that did some relationship. It was even one case study. It was useless. Where there was some man that had something with androgen. Like they couldn't even. They were. It, mm-hmm. That they weren't even. They, they didn't even come up with androgens yet. The Germans were, were busy trying to extract it mm-hmm. in Germany. So this is an idiot. He, the, 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 there was some relationship with androgens and prostate cancer. Do you realize that that, 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 that brainwashing, that piece of data literally has existed till today? Yeah. Every guy comes in. Am I going to get prostate cancer? No. no. So, so here's the data. There's mold. Now, I will use the data right now. Journal of American Medical Association. In the last two or three years, did a huge report, and this was also in, in, in JAMA and New England Journal of Medicine. There you go. And it was the, my, my guys over at Harvard. And they did testosterone studies. Look it up, folks. No data, nothing supports that a man, now listen clearly, a man that starts androgens that is free of prostate cancer, mm-hmm. just, testosterone will not cause it. Now, mm-hmm. listen to me. I had another guy last week that I diagnosed with prostate cancer. If you're a man, and I don't even care how old you are, but typically it's going to be an older guy, like at least in his mid-50s or older, if you have already the molecular seeds in your prostate that are adenoma for prostate cancer, and you give androgens, you blow oxygen on the fire. I love that. Yeah, it's No one's going to argue it, yeah. and, and any nut that thinks they're going to they're argue that. So I have watched PSAs. I watch PSAs closely. And of mm-hmm. course, for most men, digital rectal exams, the data shows digital rectal exams are basically useless because yeah. PSAs are horrible too. But because we're men and no one gives a shit about us, <laughs> if, we're women, if we are women, it will be, I'm just telling the truth. No, no, no. I love it. We're idiots. Where are those million men? I wish they would start marching again. The million man march? Can't they come back? Where the floor? Hey guys, will you come back? <laughs> I mean, we're like idiots. If women, at the data for PSA is all we have. They trash PSA. Now they're bringing it back. Yeah, oh. I don't know what to do with like when guys are on T. I don't. I just I like go to urologist. Well, I can tell you what, well, what to do. I'm yeah. giving one of my secrets to you because yeah. I, 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 of course I do. It's what I'm. I, I have to do it. So 
when you when you start when you take a man for testosterone and you do a history and physical you ask him about his family history of prostate cancer boom if he has a positive family history a brother or a primary relative and he has prostate cancer boom he's an increased 10 percent guy 10 percent. Ten percent. that's just with that with with or without testosterone as he gets older it is interesting that testosterone levels go lower estrogen goes up other molecular switches and who gets prostate cancer old men with mm -hmm. low t yeah but it is true. So, but, but, but I, you know, you know, I refer, I'll refer you to an, a brilliant man, Dr. Abraham Morgenthauer. Morgenthauer. Read this. Read testosterone saturation. Harvard guy. I think he's a very arrogant guy, but he's one of my colleagues. He's a very good guy. Gets the job so, done. He's a good guy. He's a, he's a very smart man. And he came up with something called testosterone saturation Many years ago, maybe 10 years or more ago, he said here, he said the guys, the, the guy in the 1930s was foolish and wrong. And it was a, it's crazy. It was a case study. There's no data. The data supports that men that are free of, test, of prostate cancer who take androgens, now not super physiologic, but I don't see it with steroid users either. Mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting. And but you see that. Food, that's what's really cool about I love I your see, experience because you see guys on super physiological levels. I, I have I've been doing this for 20 years, you know, underground. Now, a couple of years ago, I went, I went above ground. So like, we got to get on this guy. That's one of the things I tell people about bodybuilders and, and, and performance enhancers. I'm like, these are the real experts. They've been doing this for 50 years. You know, like Arnold and all these guys were playing with yeah, things. they're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're still. So the prostate deal, it's called Abraham Morgenthauer, Dr. Abraham Morgenthauer out of Harvard. And he, he's a urologist. He came up with this concept, what is brilliant. It's, it's, I think it's coming, uh, it's, it's coming out. It's fledgling, though, and there's no real supportive data that's really on it except for just anecdotal data and retrospective data. There's no double-blinded data perspective yet because, again, no one cares about men. So, and, and there's no money to be made. Yeah. It, but that's a, so testosterone, if you older men, apart from getting older and they have bad molecular switches that can go off and they have metabolic syndrome when they're older, they, they have pelvic inflammatory disease if they're fat. So men with metabolic syndrome have increased risk for prostate cancer. Why? Down in the pelvis, there's a lot of diabetes. There's, there's pelvic, there's, there's, I'm just using a term, you know, apart from the cytokines and all these scientific biologic, you know, discussions. So people, fat men have, have more prostate cancer. So there's disease down there. Now, men definitely, they, they lower androgen and they increase estrogen. This whole milieu is for no reason, anyone, no one can argue it, they have increased risk for prostate cancer as they get older. So when you enter testosterone into this in their 40s, they're protected. It's, so the data recently from, I told you, called the testosterone studies out of the Harvard guys, and it was JAMA and New England Journal of Medicine, you can research it. Yeah. It shows. It said it was funny enough, and this is like this is why I want to present this because how come the CBS isn't talking about? It? They're hiding this. Yeah. So the, the guys at Harvard are. are you, you could probably believe them. <laughs> they're actually pretty arrogant guys. I mean, but they're not selling anything. They have endowments out there. Is like more hair than my poodle has in his body. I mean, so I mean, he's, he's just stretching over there. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting boring again. So the truth is, it's like. The, the testosterone absolutely in no shape, size in any study has ever been shown to cause prostate cancer. If you, and if you're, if you're on it long enough at a certain point, you're protected. Mm -hmm. Now I, so I've been tracking thousands of men's PSAs for years. If a man doesn't initially go up over the first year or two, mm -hmm. maybe three, three years, that's called PSA acceleration. You better know what that is. Yep, you better, I know. Yep. You better watch it. And initially there's a little bit of an up bump because it, there are antigens in the prostate, it converts to DHT, and it's going to, it, the, 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 the tissue of the prostate stroma is going, to grow, is going to grow a little bit. And then so you see a proportional increase of stromal growth. This is from the guys, urology guys explained this to me at Yale last year, for example. I went to their conferences I go every year. And it goes, and then, it's, then it stops. Now, if you have prostatitis, now if you're a man that suffers from these pelvic inflammatory issues, you're going to see this PSA go all over the board. And if it goes up too much and you don't care for it, you're going to get a digital, you're going to get a, 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 bi a biopsy of your prostate. Yeah. Horrible thing. Horrible thing. So if men, you have to watch the PSAs, it, but if, if you can make it, I have men that I have had on testosterone from me for more than 10 years, their PSAs are under one. Yep. It never goes up. So, so again, only two things that matter on testosterone. I'm so sorry to be so lengthy. Uh, you got, no, we need the heart, details. There's guys starving heart, for this. 
heart prostate, heart prostate. Well, well what about the penis, Doc? What is this? Is testosterone going to make my going, penis grow? The, yes, it will. <laughs> it will a little bit, actually. But, the, but <laughs> it, it will. Your, your, your testicles will shut off. So, you know, and, and there's anecdotes of testosterone with growth hormone. The penis can get a little. So what happens is the penis itself is basically maturated during pu- pu- puberty. And those receptors are basically kind of like the long bones. You know, they're fused at the ends and then they're done. And so, but there's, so when you take androgens and if you don't have, in the absence of being humble and not having depression and medical disease and cardiac disease and heart failure, and you put it in the testosterone goes into your brain and those hit those receptors, there's actually a side effect profile on testosterone for spontaneous erections and priapism, which is common. Oh, yeah. wow. But it's true though. I mean, it's so, so it goes in that central nervous system. So if you're using your penis more, you're getting more blood flow. Yeah. That's what happens is it doesn't really get bigger, but it gets, it, it's, it appears to be big. Mm-hmm. Now this all comes from urology. These are questions you're asking that are crazy. Great. Cause I've already asked all these questions to some of the top urologists in the world. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm like, I'm going to ask this guy. He's probably, he's already done it all. So I'm just going to already asked all these questions. Yeah. I can the same thing over and over and Doc, over. I'm so. going to, I'm going to ask you a really controversial one. This Go one's ahead. all over the internet. Have you heard about, um, uh, not masturbating, increasing testosterone? Have you heard that one? I have heard of that. I don't know. I saw, I saw one study that showed a little bit of abstinence did increase. I need to get the full paper. But there's people all over Reddit. They did this like no, they call it no fap month where guys are on YouTube. And he's like, I didn't masturbate for a month. My testosterone went up. So I, I, haven't, I haven't seen anything, any evidence. And I just. Why aren't you taking testosterone so you can masturbate more? So I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they're doing. I got, the internet's getting to be a really strange place, especially YouTube. Um, can I, can I get a little bit more of your opinion on estrogen then and using anti-aromatization agents? There's a big drama with that, you know, with osteoarth or, you know, bone density yeah. and HDL. Yeah. yeah. So, so here's the bottom line. Bottom line is this. Bottom line is this. I love it. Bottom line. There's no, there's no data. There's no data guys. There's no data, but I mean, when you take the variability of aromatization with men on androgens is is like my the poodle the hair of my poodles on my poodle over there. Mm. It's a lot. It's a lot of variation. So if you're an aromatizer, and it's not just because you're a fat guy, but when you're heavier, there appears to be a greater aromatization. Depending if you're on gel, if you're on esters, intermuscular, the pellets. I could talk to them blue in the face. If you aromatize, what happens? So. It goes into the brain and guys can have effects in the brain, which is they get a little too emotional or snappy. Look, there's no direct cookie cutter. It doesn't, it's not going to be bad for the hair, but they can get puffy and hold water. They definitely can get gynecomastia. They can get physical gynecomastia or they can get tender. It just annoying uh, co- uncomfortableness when the shirt is on and it's annoying, it burns, burning. And then, uh, so that's, this is all aromatization testosterone esters or that every type of biologic testosterone will aromatize to some degree. I have seen men that have been on one to two grams of testosterone and their, testosterone and their estrogen levels are normal. Hmm. I have seen men, and I'm not kidding, it's super, that's very rare obviously, yeah. but I've seen men that are on a teeny dose of gel or more, more commonly the small dose of an intermuscular ester like sipinate, and I've seen levels very high of aromatase. A, a, a estrogen because the aromatase is obviously very active. So when you look at it all and you measure all these things, you do, I do it clinically for every man. So the bottom line is this, I take a man in, I do his history and physical exam, I get to know him personally. No two men are alike. The only thing that's simple is we're, we're men, we're on, he's here for androgen, he, he wants it. So there are some simple things, we're just men, we're in the room, the door is closed, we get to know each other and I, I love this. And then we do his medical history and then we go into the, the after we, we for, So then in the future, we start looking at maybe estrogen, which I don't even, and guys, you know, for all my guys that are, that are my patients listening to this, the doc knows, they know that there's no need when you're on a physiologic, regular, sustained dose of testosterone, you don't need to measure estrogen. There's no data that's going to hurt you. But if men, a lot of men, I'm, I am at here to serve, if men feel that they want to measure it, because they, they just f- have a balance point because they do feel better and it's sustainable for them. And we want it. So how do we, how do we, how do we ma- manage and how do we manage testosterone estrogen ratios? Number one, you try never to use aromatase inhibitors because aromatase inhibitors can cause death. 
it will tank the HDL. Oh, I just wow. I didn't tank, know. tank, oh. tank. So I you never done. start them on aromatase until I, I don't. Yeah. I, 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 I use it sparingly. Can you talk, you just talked a little bit about, there's a big, big important thing about the ratio of testosterone to estrogen, right? Is that with ED? You know, or? Oh my God, I love all this stuff. But the, you know what though? I have guys that have come into me and they're just t- depending on after the labs, after the injection, they go to the labs and they, their levels can look like crap and estrogen's up over. And, and I try to make sense of all this stuff. This is what happens when you do it for 20 years, I guess. And I, I say there must be some ratio that I could look at. And it's inherently, obviously, a ratio of antigen that's greater to estrogen. Is yeah. it 2 to 1 or 10 to 1 or 100 to 1? It's more like 10 to 1, I guess, if you want to get less, If you want to squeeze the neck and get something out of me. Yeah. But if I have men that say, Doc, I'm horny as hell. I feel great. And I look at his, I look at his numbers. I go, how can you feel great? <laughs> so this is the man. This is a man's brain. So you can't cookie cut. But mm-hmm. here's, the, here's the bottom line for your listeners and for the people out there. It is important to look at. It's, it's important to take a man seriously because men, some men don't care. Other men do care. It is important. Some men are massive aromatizers. Some guys are like ro- steel robots. They, 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 they just, they're like steel. They don't aromatize. I'm amazed. So you have to offer it to them. And then how do you manipulate the estrogen levels? And you need to measure, you can measure Total estrogen, you can measure an estrogen. I'm giving everything to you guys. Yeah, total estrogen. estrogen from LabCorp. You can, or Doc, I don't know. Don't do total estrogen. We like to use the, the estradiol E2 ultra sensitive by a dilution yeah. method. Dilution I was ask about that. Liquid chromatography mass spectra. This is all I, it's like I'm a savant, but I'm actually, it's all I do all day long. Because so, their regular estradiol, I heard, is, is really um, insufficient. Like it's very, it's it like can be. by 60% or something, I heard. It, it's the variabilities. You know, I've seen guys, I have so many different little sub studies. I have guys that have measured like different, they've gone to a lab at LabCorp and Quest. Like I'm, and I'm not, they don't pay me, but you know, some standardized lab. It's a very good, very reproducible. They, they have great assays and they use, you know, liquid chromate, they use mass diode. They use very good uh, assays, very expensive. You know, it's a very big lab. You can't go to some mom pie lab and think you're going to get this. It just won't, you, you get what you pay for inherently. Even in Europe, I had a lot of stuff in South Africa. We looked at, I have a guy there that we looked, he wanted to see the differences and oh my God, they're all over the board. So you have to go clinically in the end, but some men to total ask, the total estrogens, which is more E2, estradiol, than, than estrone or any other form of estrogen, it's mainly E2 estradiol. So some men, we measure it directly with the ultra-sensitive assay, or you can do other assays. So, But here's what you do. Here's the common sense. You measure it. You eyeball it. You mm-hmm. look at the guy clinically. Is he puffy? Is, is he hypertensive? Is he gynecomastic? Is he, how's his brain? I had a guy not a year ago that I just loved. I mean, I love the story because he's okay. He, he was, he was really, he wanted to talk to me. He was leaving messages and I called him back. It took me a little while, you know, a few hours. I called him back. I said, what, what's wrong? Doc, I need to talk to you. What, what, what's wrong? Doc, it's happening too much to me. I saw another animal on the side of the road and I was crying. Oh, I, okay. I, didn't, I didn't laugh at it. I said, sir, I said, sir, first of all, you know, I love you, buddy. It's okay. You cried when you saw that animal, but I, and I'm not kidding. This is like a man's man. And he's like, doc, this is fucking crazy. I can't tell stories. I'm crying. I saw the animal on the side of the road. I was just, I went to work. I was crying. I go, it's okay. That poor animal was, wasn't sleeping. You know, was it sleeping? So I am not kidding. The effects of men's, you could balance this. Here's how you do it. For, I'm giving all the secrets away to you, doc. All right. Here's thanks. You balance it. Here's how you balance it. Cause I need, we need doctors to, to work around the world to understand this. You, 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 you take the testosterone you're giving and just give it if it's at micro doses, no, but guys don't want to be pin cushions. You give it, you change delivery system. Good luck with that. You, you make it so it doesn't bolus up and down, which is hard to do. And you yeah. have to, some guys will like grapeseed oil with the, the way they, they metabolize. Some guys will like grapeseed oil, the carriers, some guys, and they, the esters are interesting for how they carry. Once an ester is in a muscle, the, the, the physiological biophysics and the biologic pharmacology is it releases fr- into the muscle. Once it's released into the, into the bloodstream, it, 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 it's, it's, tes- it's free testosterone. Oh. That's why you see high free testosterone much higher than total. Did you know that? I discovered that too. Wait, what you see? When you see, measure see. total, when you look, when you use estrogen just test, testosterone, yeah. and you look on the labs, I don't care if it's two days at the peak or the trough, when you after the injection, you will see a huge disparity. Ninety-nine percent of men 
where the total will be one number and the free is dramatically higher. It's wow. because ester lays into the muscle, the ester physiology, enanthate, propanate, sipinate, the ester physiology is only there and changes it for how it's leaching, mm. it, how it delivers. Once it's delivered, I'm giving all the secrets. Yeah. Once it's delivered, once it's delivered, it's free testosterone. Yeah, it's, instead of, it, you're, you're saying a lot of people don't even know it. It's God, usually, man. usually it's bound to albumin or sex hormone binding globulin, which doesn't make it useless. It but, it's, no, yeah. it no, but it is useless, but because you have so much releasing out of that muscle, depending on the physics, the dose, the type. I mean, there's no question the guy, depending on where you put it in the body, it's incredible. The variability. I have guys that they, they've done studies of themselves, you know, anecdotally case studies where they, they get higher uh, um, leaching and higher circulation in post and peak after the injection from the deltoid versus the, the, the glute versus the anterior thigh. I mean, I can go on forever. This yeah. is, this is, this is why men, why men love what I do because all uh, I do, I can oh, listen to you for hours. This is, this is just this goes on forever. Bro, but in the yeah. end, in the end, you you got to be careful. You you can't give the bolus doses, you know. But you well, what when a doctor when I if someone's out there and they want to go see a good doctor for TRT, when when especially with labs, I think labs is kind of you know labs and um, whatever doses they're using. What are things that the person should be working with with their doctor? Like if if the, the doctor's not measuring sex hormone binding globulin or. Well, let me, let me how go. often should you get your labs run? Sex hormone binding globulin is only good for one thing, for the initial diagnosis. After mm -hmm. the initial diagnosis, it's, it's absolutely useless. And another thing for the doctors out there, if, I agree in the beginning, if you're trying to determine what type of hypogonadism it is, the gonadotropins are important. Absolutely important. Yeah, After you good. have, absolutely, a, absolutely. Is it, is it primary? Is it secondary? Okay, done. Very yeah. easy. Very simple and easy. Think about it, guys. Think about what the ideology. Think about what is it? Is it? A, is it a guy that's never done steroids? Is it from depression? Is it metabolic syndrome? Is it drug? I have the client filters. I have the, the rare conj. I have all these rare cases. I have. Yeah. I have the whole world. Yeah. From India, I have these. I have one case. I, I work with a guy at Harvard. I've had some of his patients. He's taking back some of mine. So forget the rare stuff. Common things are common. You have to diagnose. You use sex hormone binding. You use the real assay, total and free. Liquid chromatography, mass spectroscopy, run twice, dilution method. You need to see total and free. So many men are getting hurt in the world because the doctor doesn't know what to do. He measures total. He goes, get out of here. You're fine. Yeah. And meanwhile, the poor guy has a huge sexual binding globin level. Yes. Because he's obese. Well, what's he's even your opinion when a, when, when a, let's just say that you have a 21-year-old a that comes in and their free testosterone is 251 and their, their free is at 2.2. You know what I'm saying? Like right on that edge. Do you still say, nope, not diagnosed? Sorry, oh, see you later. No, no, no. And the Endocrine right? Society supports me and I'm supporting them. Yeah. It's not a number so Thank much. You. But yeah. it's, 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 it's a person. It's, I, I know as long as you don't mind, we're jumping all over the board, but yep. we're just still talking about it. So the diagnosis of testosterone is very, is, is changing. And it's gone to the point now where the real conservative societies have agreed. It's not a number, but if you're 23 and your testosterone 700, come on, man. Yeah. 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 If no, you're 23 and you're fucked up and you've been I, on steroids for years. That's a different story. Yeah. I but, had a, I had a guy come in and he was yeah 29. He's like, I think I have low T and you know, he's in the mid 700s. I'm like, sorry, guy, you're not getting testosterone. You, 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 sorry. You, can't, you know, you don't want to, and number one, you don't want to hurt someone. Yes. And you, they, they, those guys will go out. But could we, and this is, and, and still I would want it lower. Can you talk a little bit about ACG and, and I don't know if you're using, you've used Clomid much. Clomiphene citrate. Yeah, so, oh, I, I use everything. I use everything. So, so, but, but going back for the diagnosis with the total and the free, it's amazing that there are men that mainly they're older men that have metabolic syndrome. They're going to have, or something else. I see men, th there's a big, pro a lot of doctors are missing this, opioid use, chronic mm -hmm. opioids destroy testosterone, prednisone and corticosteroids. I had a patient like that today. So, so, so you got to be a great, this is why in my world, why I'm looking to hire only internists that are trained like a mother, like yeah. I was, so you have to go through 10 years of training mm -hmm. to be an anabolic metabolic doc, because I want to get that, sir. You, you're going to do it. You're going to come in. You have to, you have to be beat to the bone for years in the hospital rounds in the, in the ICUs on the floors everywhere because you will draw out of internal medicine from the red cells to the cardiac, the kidney, and then the endocrine stuff. So in the end, you have to diagnose using the total, the free, the sex hormone binding globin, and the gonadotropins because it will pinpoint the lesion.
Mm-hmm. And then after that, when they're treated and they're under the wing, you don't need yeah. this. The LH and care. FSH are d- done after that. Thank right? you. They're, you can give gone. a wipe of an- so, and we've le- we're learning that with thyroid right now because I'm I've gotten pretty good over the years with the thyroid. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. That's a whole other show. You know, with 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 reading the, I call them reading the tea leaves. Yeah, you, you know, apart from the, the, the Hashimoto's. Yep. You know, which they most people should have Hashimoto's if they have hypo, you know, thyroidism. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that full thyroid panel with a reverse T three. You know, yep. I've got really good. I didn't want T4, to get four reverse T three. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, all I, the I, I, I use, I use, Yeah, the antibodies, Hashimoto's. Mm-hmm. You know, antifibroglobin. So, you know, TSH anymore, that's, that's 19, that's too, well, you know, it helps, but there's a lot more to that picture now. We're figuring that for, out. But for most people, if that's normal yeah. and they're on Synthroid and, and you say, Hey, how do you feel? And it could be a woman. I have a few ladies left. How do you feel? Like, I feel fine. So is it, is, is yeah. it worth facing that? Is it worth putting on an armor thyroid and desiccation and putting yeah, on four T3? It doesn't, I do it for people. It's again, respect the person doctor mm-hmm. respect the person and if you don't know something i all day long say i don't know but you know what they pay me for see the phone i call other doctors and i i work with other doctors. i a, love that i love that yeah you know, so so getting back to the diagnosis once you're done with the diagnosis you have to keep the guy under your wing and then you deal with him and you look for estrogen so you don't want to you don't want to use those blockers let me go back to that real quick aromatase inhibitors are from many, many, they're decades old. They're for breast cancer, for, for estrogen sensitive, uh, estrogen positive receptor breast cancer. I'm not, a, I'm not an oncologist. I can tell you this though, they're, they're massive. There's two types that, you know, the suicide type, you know, the, 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 and, and the standard basic, you know, that's not so su- it's, it's one that's, there, there's a Romanus and there's Letrosol and there, there's a Rimidex, right? And then Romacin. Okay. And so, when you use these drugs, they're very powerful. They will, when you're on TRT, typically doses of half a milligram of Rimidex twice a week yeah. will, well, well, it's amazing. Guys go, fuck, this dose, this little baby pill. Yeah. I go, just w- watch when we do the labs. And, yep. and, and, and as far as how they feel, some men can, it's called brittle. Their brains get brittle. They just, they feel dry because you could very easily, these, all these anti-aging places, they don't have, they're not responsive. They don't work with guys and dial them in tightly. They used to, but they're losing it. I don't know what's going on. And they let, they're, all these guys are on too much aromatase inhibitors for years. So, and you, you look at their HDLs, none of these doctors are looking at lipid pain, but they're not, they're not internists. They're not, yeah. they're foolish. So their HDLs are in the garbage. There's, I've seen, ready for this? I've seen multiple heart attacks just because it was a man, bad genetics. He was on testosterone, sometimes too much. And then the, 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 the end, the yeah. end hurt, the end knife in, in the chest and Dracula, Dracula's stake was chronic use of Romanase inhibitors, wow. myocardial infarction. I've seen, mo- I do videos on this stuff. Yep. So you can't, if I'm, so I, when I assess a guy and I'm balancing estrogen, I first balance it with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the drugs. And I, I don't use those blocking agents first. I look at his HDL doc. I look at his HDL, and if he has a naturally low HDL, because I call him, he's just a big, he's a big men have, a, half the guys out there just have low HDLs because they're just yep. men. Yep. It's an independent risk factor for having a heart attack. So if you give them testosterone, what's going to happen to the HDL? It goes lower. Yep. And then on top of that, you're giving them fucking a Romanase inhibitor. Yeah. It's going to go I, lower. I, I, have you I, seen, I thought I'd seen some studies though with, with, and that's why I brought up Clomid. I've seen some of the longer term studies coming out with Clomid now that. Not Clomid, Novadex. Clomid. It's Novadex. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sidestepping to that's Clomid. Okay. I've seen some two to three year studies for on clomiphene citrate and that having a for positive. TRT, for TRT. Yeah, for, can you, and yeah, do you ever I do Clomid? About, no, let me, I do it all. Yeah. In fact, it's nothing I haven't done. I love it. I love it. Fill me in. 10 man. years. If I have almost 4,000 data banks. I have yeah. histories in my data bank. So, okay, we, we, those are Romanase inhibitors that are obviously systemically going to block uh, in, this, in this system, if you will, the conversion, the aromatization of testosterone. We're done. Okay. Now, there's other drug systems. The other drug class is called selective estrogen receptor modulators, Clomid and Novadex. Mm-hmm. These are also for breast cancer. And, and another one is, is for um, osteoporosis. So th- there, there are these amazing class of drugs 
that they're partial agonist and antagonist all in one. In some tissues, they're blocking. And other tissues, they're going to be stimulating. Wow. Yeah. That's called yeah. partial oh, agonist. It's weird like that. So, yeah. so, so Clomid, here's how Clomid works. For, for, I do have some men on Clomid for, for TRT, mm-hmm. a handful. Yeah. So here's what it is. Here's how it works. Clomid is an anti-estrogen in the brain above the pituitary gland in the hypothalamus region that is the, the sexual area. It's the area where the feedback is how your body modulates this negative feedback with the brain, pituitary, and the gonads. And it's so delicate. It's, that's why I am so, that's why when I talk to these scientists guys all over the world, they're PhD guys no more, because they do the animal stuff and they're working with humans. They know I'm the clinical and the street guy. It's so complicated. There's so many, there's so many receptors and variability, but generically it blocks in the brain estrogen, believe it or not. And that block, and it blocks other receptors too. And, and that's the PhD level for these guys. When, when you block those receptors, do you realize your brain gets fooled that there's an imbalance of testosterone, but it's not blocking testosterone, it's blocking estrogen mm-hmm. in that near, near the limbic and part, limbic part of the brain. And you get this reflex increased signal that goes down from the hypothalamus it, through the pituitary stalk into the anterior pituitary, and you get an increased pulse of LH and FSH. Mm-hmm. You like it? That's yeah. the mechanism. Yep. So you produce your own endogenous uh, uh, testosterone. And it, as far as estrogen, it goes with it because you aromatize more for most men. But some guys, it blocks. But for most men, it goes up. Now, yeah. men, here's, my, here's, my, here's something I'll give you another secret that I discovered. No one else in the world ever discovered this until me. Not that I've heard of. So if you're a man and you've had a prior exposure to your brain from androgens, because you're a steroid user, mm-hmm. And even if you have a super physiologic guy where you did you know, heavy duty, you're, if you're pretty shut down because you've really shut yourself down with suppressive steroids, years of steroids, test, trend, alcohol, you're a real steroid user, which there are millions. If you try to get them off and just use Clomid, suicide. Wow. And, and when, I've, when, I, when I started announcing, I've, I've been, unfortunately, I've been through some suicides. Wow, I'm sorry to hear that. Because I, I tried, I've tried in the beginning I, I, I tried to give them, you know, a little Clomid, a little AC, and I, I really ended up killing people. Wow. That's the biggest gym I think you've given me I, that I can, I need I'm not kidding. That more. And, and, and if you watch my videos on that, if you put Clomid, you'll see men don't bullshit. They'll come out on those boards. That's why the boards are incredible. My, my, go to my comments. Some of my, com- some of my videos have approached over 2000 comments. Wow. And they're just their boards upon boards. I go in there once in a while and I troll around and stuff. I don't say anything. But yeah. I'm just so humble that I did it. I caused yeah. this. They, they always put me down, docs on steroids. And most, <laughs> guys, most, guys, most guys love me. Most of my guys love me. But, but I just, I'm just throwing the bones out there and they're just, you know. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so then you, you need to use HCG when you're pulling guys yeah. off with Clomid or? So well, you can use it, but you just got to be, what are you using it for? So the guy, it, it, is the guy going to have, is it going to be permanently shut down anyway? What are you trying to do right now? Get fertile, use HCG. Yep. You, could, you, could, you could use HCG with some Clomid to get better, for, better fertility. You can't. Well, AC, ACG is an LH agonist, correct? That's how that works. Utilizing hormone analog, correct. Yeah, okay, so that basically what that does is, like you're saying, a different way to have your body start producing more. It directly I, bypasses, it bypasses your brain. It goes right to your Leydig and Serotoli cells. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and so in that case, we do get a, a, an increase in fertility. Sometimes the testes can oh grow. God. Yeah. Oh my God. But it's not sustainable. And you can't, there are, so let me go back to the Coleman. I have guys, and this is the beginning. So when a man, a steroid user, or even a man who's been on androgen, maybe he wants to come off and try to, you know, go on to Clomid, or he wants to flip off and he wants to, he wants to be fertile. And mm-hmm. these are the, look, urologists are brilliant doctors. They're surgeons. Don't, th- this is, they don't have time to do this stuff. Some of them are in my, cal- my caliber now because I, I do this 24-7. I, yeah. I better know. They, they, they'll, give, they'll, they'll give Clomid to the guy and they'll, they'll be, they're trying to get him off steroids. So they, re, they give Clomid or they don't really like it. No, none of the doctors like the injections. They just give, he was 50 milligrams Clomid, every other day, uh, maybe a hundred, go, go away. And, and then they'll check a testosterone level. And it's going to be improved. And they'll say, hey man, look, your testosterone's back to 700 from 200 or, or 100 or lower. You must, and the guy goes, I know it looks like it's on paper. 
but I feel horrible mm. because it's doing something to that, to that neural, mm. that central nervous system. Mm. It's neuropsychiatric. Don't use it. Or so those are men that are, have prior exposure to androgens. I discovered it next. If a man is a virgin, says androgens and he's, I have a guy, I have one guy in my practice, maybe, maybe two right now. I think I know three. I have three guys that have never done steroids. They're in their fifties to sixties. They have low T because they, the fed don't, doesn't want to say because of aging, mm -hmm. but they're older and they have what's called metabolic, mm -hmm. you know, sleep apnea. They had heaviness. They lost, they, they've lost a lot of weight, but the testosterone doesn't actually come back always. And they're older and there's a myriad of multifactor. So they have low T multiple times checked. It's been, I checked, you know, checked four times, three times. It's 250, 249, 230, 210. And the guy, more importantly, he has signs and symptoms associated with hypogonadism, which is he feels tired. His sexual drive is down. He's not motivated and he's just clumpy. Mm -hmm. So, and if you, and then more importantly, the next step is if you give him something without hurting him, because you took an oath not to do it, don't hurt anyone. And it helps them and you manage them. Voila, you've, you're a good doctor. Mm -hmm. So that's in the end. It's so simple. So when I have men, I carefully put this guy in Clomid. I think it probably was four or five. And if he's listening right now, how long has it been, sir? Five years now? His testosterone stays up to the 900s. Mm -hmm. He is hornier than he was. Yep. He's sustained. Yep. It's freaky. Yeah. I don't, I've never seen it. So there's my rare guy. Yeah. Typically, but most men that come in to see me, they're already on androgens, either androgel, either transdermal or injections. And I just clean them up and just wash their hearts. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why Clomid, but Clomid is, Clomid is, is, can be used to augment and to increase the intensity, intensification of HCG. I'm giving you all the secrets. Mm -hmm. I love you it. Love it. Yeah. You do HCG and and the guys at Baylor, they're out there too. They said steroid users give 3,000 uh, uh, international students every other day. Wow. That's right out of their textbook. You're Baylor. I, I got to see that. That's, that's Baylor. Wow. HCG. Go to Google and put, put, okay. put ACG put 3,000. Okay. 3,000 every other day or three times a week. So, so that's what they hey, went we're to. not giving medical advice either, guys. There's, a, there's no medical advice. Information. So these, these, are just, these are just academic stuff, educational academic stuff. Mm -hmm. So essentially, I, I, depending how shut down the man is and what we're looking to do, I'm always, uh, guys are always coming in on steroids and first they want to get fertile, then they want to go on replacement testosterone. This is my business. No one's going to take that from me. I mean, because I'm the anabolic. So most of my young men, most of my guys, the, the average age is 37, but on steroids for 10 years, they've tried to come off. They're blasting and they're never going to come off. They're going to, there's re no one is ever going to try to take it because when they come off, they go down so low. Why would you stay? It's, it's unethical. Yep, I won I that fight. I won that fight. It's unethical. It's unethical to, to when you know when medically with data now that you know the man is going to go into the tank, he's going to have significant hypogonadism. It's called anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. After so many years of using, you know that he's going to suffer. It's unethical to do it. You need to offer him transitional care with HCG, Clomid, the ancillary drugs. And, and or physiologic regimens. And I'm just, I'm giving and to, of testosterone. This is right out of Cleveland Clinic. Mm -hmm. Cleveland Clinic said this. So Harvard, Cleveland Clinic, Baylor, you know, me. So it, it's man per man though. And, and some men say, I, I really want to see if my testicles come back. You ready for how long it could take? How long did you say, how long, how long? Up to a year, up to a year. Wow. Yeah. And they, and I'll be honest with you. I, every man's, I like, told you is my, is a man. No two men are the same. Yeah. Every single man is a different man. And I can't say it enough. It will never change for me. And, but then you say, look, typically I could predict based on what I could predict is that you, and you'll fall in the prediction and we watch you closely and we could switch at any time to rescue you and just give you some testosterone for your brain. So many men, young men that are under 30 are so angry at themselves that they've done this to themselves because yeah. they did not know. And this is my number one calling in life. I don't need a Nobel Peace Prize. Number, but, it'll be, but if they want to give it to me, they should. So, <laughs> so because, because these so many men that come to me that are in their, that are, that are, that are after years and years of steroids, it's too late. It's permanent damage. And they, they are so angry at themselves. Sometimes they've killed themselves for it because of superimposed depression that they've had now is worsened. And they're so pissed off they destroyed themselves for, for this narcissistic game. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so, uh, so that's why you got to heal them. And I tell them, sir, let's get you fertile. And then yeah. once, once the baby's in the oven and everything's great, we'll put you on some testosterone, bro. And, and, we'll, and we'll just watch the heart and the prostate. Yeah. Come on, buddy. Yeah. Life is, su there's enough suffering in the life. You don't have to suffer. You've, yeah. If I determine that you're going to have permanent damage, because guys come into me, they just go like this. They just say, doc, take me. Because I'm on test and trend for 10 years. You think, gonna, you think I'm going to come back, doc? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and the guy that's done one or two or three cycles or a couple cycles, then I have to assess, is he partially shut down? And when, it, when the problem with this is, doc, when men do steroids, just testosterone even, they get a heightened, their brain changes the plastic. Oh, yeah. They're used to that then, right? That's their baseline so raises. You set you set the bar for say your libido high mm -hmm. and then if you just come down to testosterone yeah. dose this is a problem guys yeah i Don't like that that's not something they talk about and even with my patients there's guys that i've had a couple of guys on anabolics and you know i had one guy he was upset because he was sore the day after the gym he's like oh well i wasn't sore before i'm like that's actually kind of normal to be sore the day after the gym. he's like well my test dose isn't high enough i'm like yeah you're 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 your freeze at like 15 and your total's at 900. You're, you're on paper, you're looking good, but. But, but his brain, you see what happened though? Yeah. These guys have set their brains up and I've seen as high as 45,000 depending on the assay. What? Yeah. My lab only goes to three. After 3,000, well, it just says over three. There are there, some of the lab, there are some rare toxicology labs in the world. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, unfortunately that man, the poor man that died, Dallas McCarver, I did his, I did his autopsy. Oh, report. I do remember you did a video on this. Yeah. Right? yeah. So we had some evidence and I don't know how true it was that the toxicology report said his testosterone was 45,000, but I have seen 20. Most labs will, will, will say greater than it. Once it hits 1500 or 7,000, yep. it will say greater than, and you're done. Yeah, but mine I, says three. So yeah, yeah, I could say it depends what lab you. A fifteen hundred is also one of the more common ones. But you know, and, and it's just it's men walking around on a gram of testosterone two three days after the injection. Yeah, it's it's gonna you know what you know what it's gonna be. The ha well, tell people the half lives on these things are a week two weeks. Oh, yeah. They don't get yeah, that right. So I'm telling you, and a lot of gear now is mixed with undecanate because it just sells better, mm -hmm. and the half life of that is months. Is it that long? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's it's nibido. To in Europe, and it's even here now, it's, it's, I don't think it's Nibido. I think it's just a different brand. Testosterone and Decanate, you ready for this? One injection every three months. What? Yeah, you didn't know that? Yeah. No, I didn't know it was that bad. Wow. You can give it. You can give. Now, I've not I, given it. So I, I'm playing with testosterone. I, you know, I do testosterone and, and all that other stuff. I'm like, I want to talk to you. I'm like, you know, let me make sure I know what I'm doing now before I go anywhere else. So. The problem with that drug is, and why I don't, I had one guy that I was going to do it for because he just was, leaves the country a lot. And he's like, doc, I don't mind if it kind of goes up slowly and down slowly. And he's, a, you know, I take care of a lot of business guys. And he, he said, you know, that's fine. So we were teeing him up to do it. And then he, he listened to me and he said, what's the thing that, you, that me, the, the anabolic, metabolic doc, the expert in testosterone, he said, well, what is it you're scared about? Because I said, just do the small doses of the esters. I, mean, I know it's a pain in the ass, but it's just, what are you going to do? He said, so pulmonary embolism is, they have a black box warning on this thing. Oh. You know what that is? A PE? Yeah, that's so, pretty much, yeah, you get a plaque that goes, or an embolism in your high in your lungs, you die. It's, yeah, it's an oil embolism. And the reason, here's why. Because you're putting in 750 milligrams to, to 1,000 milligrams. Whoa, whoa. Okay, that's a big that's a big dose. It's in oil. It's it's a it's a it's an esterified uh, testosterone molecule. It's in oil. It's administered intramuscularly. It's only in the glute. You can't put a huge. Oh, you can't put five. What's it? Five to ten cc. I, I believe it's oh, three, three cc. That's still smaller than I thought, but still. Yeah, it's a lot. It's concentrated. So again, I don't. I just don't use it. And it's in America. They finally got a tag. They finally, you know, pumped whatever how much money they had to pay whoever they had to pay. And, and it came into America. No one's using it. Yeah, I don't know. Because it's just, it's just like, and it, I don't know, are you going to die? You know, it, it's scary because it could, it just, when the Murphy's Law, when the moons line up, it's, it's one out of, I forgot what the number is, but it's in the, it's in the packet. It's in the, it's in the data. It's very rare, maybe one out of a thousand or ooh, maybe, maybe that's more. Still, yeah, that's even 10 that or 100,000. I'm like, I don't know if I want to play with that. But that, that. So that you, you, it's not given, it's not sitting in the muscle, right? And it's going into the capillary bed and then it's, it's coagulating into more into the medium size veins. 
and it's oh. traveling with a huge piece of oil. Oh it, yeah. It goes into the lungs and it just, it just Murphy's, it's all Murphy's and, and you, and you're, you're going to be hypoxic and you probably survive it. I think if you read the case studies, but I mean, you're, you're going to be sucking wind like you yeah. have a heart attack. Yeah, I don't. I, anything with a PE, I'm, I'm okay staying away from this. But Doc, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, we're probably running over an hour. If you still got time, I got one more area. Sure, let's go. You, let's go. The the whole, you know, SARMs and peptides. You kind of done some videos on it, uh-huh. but can I get a quick kind of, quick kind of synopsis on on those? Because the SARMs are getting popular. I'm having guys come in on it, and uh, everyone's on them. All the yeah, young guys are on them. Yeah, all of them, man. They're getting their peptides overseas, and. I, uh, yeah, crazy, crazy. So yeah. I was interviewed with with Dr. Bashain from Harvard in uh, in the New York Times famous New York Times article last summer. You can go to New York Times and put, I didn't see this. Uh, yeah, Sar- Sarms New York Times. Go New to Google, Times. New York Times. Put put New York Times uh, Sarms. Sarms. Next, okay. Uh, you'll see me in an article I was quoted in. So so the Sarms are selective androgen receptor modulator versus selective estrogen receptor with the, the old fashioned Sarms. These are SARMs. The theory is it's it's the holy grail. It's 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 what we're all looking for. It's a selective androgen receptor modulator that leaves all the side effects out and just gives you musculoskeletal growth, bone strength for old ladies, and and osteoporosis correction and all that. And it's a lovely, beautiful life. So basically, now, what is doing it in the cell? It's increasing the receptor, so the testosterone becomes more potent. That's no, 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 no. It keeps no. it out. Okay. No, no. It's, it's, an, it's an actual, it's a non-steroidal selective androgen receptor stimulator. So it itself so is binding. Non, it's not a steroid molecule, yeah. like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's a non, it's like versus, you know, cortisone and prednisone. It's non-steroidal. Mm. So it's not a steroid. It's not the waxy steroid, fatty steroid. Okay, it's a, it's a non-steroidal selective androgen molecule that this molecule goes into the, the, into the cytoplasm. It goes into the cell of skeletal muscle for sure. The theory is, and the concept that they're, the world's working on, and they're going to get it down sooner or later. It's going to be two billions of dollars, I assume. Oh, I bet. But we're not there yet. And I won't give any trade secrets because I know some stuff. <laughs> I don't want to go, I don't wanna go to jail. Not right. that I'm money on anything, but I, I see where, I know the companies, I know where it's going. So what's happening is in theory is that it's stimulating the androgen receptor just like testosterone. Mm, wow. It's simple. It's very simple. It translocates into the cell and it stimulates. It has the action of stimulating the, the AR, the androgen receptor. Huh. Right? So then, then what they're hoping is because, it, because it's not testosterone, but it still does the same thing, yes. it doesn't do the same thing on the heart or the prostate. No. So, here's the, so if you read about this thing, very simple. So what do we talk about? What, did I ta- what do I tell my parents? Hair loss. Mm-hmm. It doesn't do the DHT thing. It doesn't hit those receptors up there. Puffiness, mm. heart right? Heart doesn't cause the decrease in the HDL and the LDL, doesn't cause, doesn't aromatize. So it doesn't cause, and doesn't cause a a hypertension and filling up with fluid and it doesn't hit the prostate. Mm. So, and, 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 and and the brain, it's the the theory is that it doesn't translocate in over the blood brain CNS barrier. Fooey on that because it does now. So this is, this is the Holy grail is SARMs. We are not there, and there's multiple. I'm not going to go. That's what I wanted to hear. Is there? Are we anywhere close? Oh, is there something? More. So, yeah. so, so, but well, here's. I just don't want to say the names of LG two, LG yeah. four, four. Hours. I just don't want to say the names. Yeah. It's yeah. irritating. Like I'm gonna. I don't it's want like a I'm, robot. It's like a Star Wars it, LG. I love. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like I mean, when they started. You know, look, I've been studying these SARMs for over ten years. All right. Yeah. Ostrin was the first one, mm-hmm. and I have guys, real guys, and they're like, "Hey, Doc, I got a question for you. What do you got? We got SARMs. This is ten years ago. I go, wow. I don't even know well, what is that song. <laughs> so, so, and we, he goes, this is why I learned from the bro side. I learned yeah, from the You're on the front lines. You see it. I learned from the streets. Yeah. So, so, so the guys come in, the guy comes in, the guy comes in and he goes, doc, these are top power lifters. Okay. No name is mentioned. And he goes, doc, I got an idea for you. I'm on testosterone forever. I'll bump up a little of my test, but I don't want to do Anadrol or D-ball this time. And uh, so I'm going to do this stuff called SARMs and I'm going to get strong. I'm going to bench another personal record. I'm going to squat more, deadlift more. And um, let's check my labs when I'm, uh, I have all this data. He, mm-hmm. I go, he goes, doc, let's check my labs. And I go, sir, you know, I'm not, I go, sir, you know, you can't, I don't want you, you don't want to do that. Doc, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. Don't, okay. Don't do it. 
And that's so, where people like you come in because people will do those things. It's our I jobs as physicians agree. to keep them healthy, right? Absolutely. So, you know, you know, remember Nancy Reagan? I mean, I actually liked Reagan, but you know, she said, don't do drugs. What yeah. It didn't work well. It yeah. didn't work well. You don't tell people what to do. You show people Love what's it. happening to them. You show them that their heart's getting hurt. You show them the way and you're loving and caring, always helpful. We, we take care of heroin users and, and people that are, that, are, that are methadone and HIV in the streets. I was trained in New York City and Hartford, Connecticut. You, I learned from that. And then I found the steroid users and I said, there's some, these guys are, who's not helping these men? And now there's millions and I'm the anabolic, I'm on the top of it and it's okay. So I'm just trying to heal. So always doing the right thing because they do. So the guy goes, he does his test. He does his, uh, he comes, uh, what, a week later. He actually, I don't think he even was stronger. He, <laughs> it didn't even work. And I'm going back to Anadrol or D-Ball. Or, oh, my God, please don't. Yeah. So, so his, t his HDL, horrible. Oh. Right? I mean, like, like he was on Anadrol or D-Ball. Oh, okay. His liver enzymes through the roof. Ooh. Hypertension, hypertensive. So, and then both sacks, brain down, dusted. These the guys are eunuch. So and, and it took me a while to bring him back. So so he's he's the guy, this first guy ten years ago that said to me, these things are doc. Yeah. But then again, he doesn't know what he's getting. The study showed you're going to get half the time if you just buy them off the internet. You don't even get the stuff. Yep. And the doses that were supposed to be used clinically, of course, steroid users have a way to get kind of crazy. They're like uh -huh. ten to twenty times, if not a hundred times, the dose. Yeah. Boom. If you drink a little wine, you're okay. If you drink a gallon of vodka every night. Yep. So, so SARMs, we don't, now there's many SARMs and used in conjunction. I see it all the time because I'm the, I'm the anabolic doc. And essentially, they're incredible how they work for men. In the beginning, they do seem to have less side effects. But in the end, they, we don't, they use more and more. You can't control this mm -hmm. thing. So yeah. You've got a controlled study where they're using just one and they're, they're going on off. And some guys do, and I guess they feel fine. And then sooner or later, three years later, they go, I just came off and I need PCT. Now, why would you need PCT for, for a selective androgen receptor yeah. mod? Yeah. It's supposed to be used because you don't need PCT. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier, but it is crossing the blood-brain barrier. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, no, it gets that that whole area is super confusing for me right now. Luckily, I get to talk to someone like you, but I'm trying to like not not mess with them all that much. But uh, I've seen I've been looking at some of the peptides, and maybe that's something as far as like the BPC. You've talked about that, and and some of those. But yeah, I don't even and I don't even I don't know everything. I mean, yeah. like that's BPC and BN. You know, and I did learn. I was amazed the Tanner, the Tanner that the I did. I was amazed at. Um, the PT-141, do you know what yes. that is? We've tried it a couple of times in my clinic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's unreal. Yeah. Don't do this. I have, I have some of the top row scientists, you know, guru guys, you know, for better or worse, I hate to say that word. Yeah. And some of them are dead and in jail, of course, for selling drugs. And so I have a guy who's a, the most, he's an he's a actual chemist, and he's a genius. And it's not the chemist guy, whatever is the guy's name. It's not him. This is a real chemist for, for a chemical company in America, and a huge steroid user. And uh, he is in jail. And he told me, Doc, don't have anyone stop, stop it immediately because it's, it's going to destroy your sex drive in your brain. Mm. You get re so, because, and I've seen men use it. It will give yep. spontaneous erections, freakish. Yeah. Freakish. And they're back to the, that is back to the drawing board with the pharmaceutical companies too. Just hold on here. That's coming out soon too. Mm. They got side effects with nausea, vomiting, hypertension. So yeah. it, it, it didn't make it out of phase three trials. Don't I quote heard me. that was through nasal, right? They did, were doing yeah. it for women in libido. They did it nasal. I'm telling you, man, it's freakish. Yeah. That's that limbic brain. That, that it's yep. so, so that's all I have to say, man. This is yeah. it's a, the melatonin too. So I deal with all these PEDs all the time from even real PEDs like just diuretics and clenbuterol. I mean, I, just, mm. man, I'm the, I, I write and deal with them all the time. And I always... You should always treat your patients loving, caringly. If you don't know something, you, you'll just, you know, reach out to me and just, we'll work, you know, get guys working together and yeah. we'll just keep doing it because I've legitimized it. Doctors are allowed to yeah. talk about it. I mean, the, when, the, when there's millions upon millions, including women, people taking these drugs, yeah. how can you not throw them out of the clinic? Yeah, that's a lot of times what it, what it comes down to. I've heard some of, you know previously what doctors would do to people on TRT. And like you said, man, they're people, you know, and they're, they have their lives and make their decisions. And as doctors, I hopefully uh, we're here to help them. But, That's you awesome. know, doc, I really appreciate the time. Um, how can people find you? 
What's the best way? Your YouTube? Met, met about, met about. I mean, you know, please, I just really want my, my, you know, my YouTube is probably the biggest thing we have. So YouTube, if you go to anabolic doc, you'll see me, you'll see me in the, in the white, you know, uh, lab coat. Yeah. And, 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 but metabolic, it's very easy. Just Google anabolic doc dot yeah, com. He's super and, and easy to find. And, and you'll go, I don't even have, I don't even have to have a card anymore. Cause when I'm on the, you know, I'm out places and yeah. I'm so humble that so many people come up to me. Any man who's big, who is, looks like he's on steroids, he will come That's over. That's what I'm saying. Like if he you've been on YouTube, a hug. you probably will, know this guy. So yeah, so it's, it's wherever I am in the world. My daughter was so young. She's 21 now when she was like 10, we were up in Maine and we were up in carnivals and whenever some big guys were walking around, they go, dad, oh no, <laughs> doc. What's up? And I was just like, "What's up, guys? Do guys, up, guys?" Yeah, you were so, in the club, man. You know, I, you were it's like, yeah, it's like it's a club. I mean, we're men. I mean, we, again, no respect. I have a daughter. I love her. I have a fiance. I love her. I love my mom. Women have women's health centers. I'm happy to see it. Where the hell hey. are the men's centers? Right. Yeah. Let them know, man. Right. We really need to get after these guys. So again, Doc, it was a real pleasure speaking with you. Maybe we'll check in again later in a couple months. Do this like. You, there's so many knowledge bombs here. And uh, I actually went into Reddit and I dropped a quote, uh, a, a post and said, Hey, I'm going to be talking to you. And I got some awesome. questions. So some of these questions are from there and uh, we'll probably be getting more. So again, doc, I can't you. thank you enough for what you've done for the field and uh, what you, what you're doing to provide this information to everyone. Thanks so. for letting me go. Not nah, cause guys I, know I go, bizarre. <laughs> I do it for you guys. I have to do this. Love it. Love it. Thanks again, doc. Thank you so much, man.